everyone, Ken Adelas here with a quick video on how to make your own backgrounds and how to animate them. Something many of you probably haven't given much thought to, but it's a lot of fun. And I always encourage kids that are learning Scratch to feel free to explore drag, drag blocks. And that's sometimes that's how I discover things by accident and that turn out to be really cool effects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete my cat. I'm going to right click on my little cat sprite here and hit delete. And I'm in my stage backdrop by default because there's nothing else uh, that can be selected right now. And I'm going to hit backdrops, the backdrops tab, which takes me into the drawing area. And you'll notice my little fill with color is selected. And you'll see down here there's actually four choices. I could either fill with the top solid color, which will match whatever colors on top here. So if it's purple on top here, you'll see it's purple here. And if it's yellow, it'll be yellow solid. But you'll notice that the other three blend the two colors together with um, a gradient fill, which is really neat. So you can do a vertical gradient fill. So if I click on this one and then click anywhere inside my background, it'll do this really cool gradient fill. And then I can hit undo. And I can try this gradient fill, which is horizontal. Or I can do that. This will be a color burst kind of type of thing. Looks like a uh, looks like a sun, a real wild sunset. So uh, what you can do with these is kind of neat. Um, I'm going to add one more, so I'm going to hit new backdrop again with the paintbrush here, or I can go here, either place to make new backdrop. So here's a new backdrop, and I'm going to do a horizontal this time. Or I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do a horizontal, and maybe I'll change my colors just so I can mess with some more, <coughs> more colors, and I'm going to fill again. I'll do something like that. Now, the, if you do a horizontal and then you try to do a vertical, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with stripes, which is interesting. So I could, let's say I take uh, yellow and uh, we'll do yellow and blue. And you'll notice it gives me these stripes. Pretty neat, right? Well, let's see what we can do with these. So there's my two backgrounds. I mean, uh, one here and one here. And we could add some effects very simply. We're going to go to events. So we're going to click on scripts. We're going to go to events and we're going to add when flag is clicked and we're going to add a forever loop and we'll add two repeats one on top of the next <clears throat> and then if you go to looks you will notice that we actually still have access to change color effect and we could also switch backdrops too back and forth as well so in other words we can do change color effect here and change color effect here if we run this you'll see the colors will change rather quickly. Actually, we're going to change the color effect, let's say, by 1 and by minus 1 here. I always like offsetting. This way my color comes back at the end. But it's only going to loop 10 times. We'll make it loop 20 times. And you'll see that the color changes. But you'll notice one thing. It's a very subtle change. So we could actually just change the color of our backdrops as we go. If you're really good at this, you know, you could change your backdrop so night turns into day and different other things. I'll maybe make another video to show you that. So you could change uh, daylight and darkness and swap them out. Not too hard to do. So I might do that at a later time. This time I just want to show you a cool effect. If you click on Whirl in both of them, and then I'm going to click on we'll Whirl let's say we'll whirl 250 times and we'll do a whirl effect of 15 and we're going to match it down here and we want it to come back so we're going to do minus 15 so let's try this and see what it does and you'll see you get this really cool whirling effect and then what will happen is because the bottom because the bottom gets offset it's going to start unraveling again and going back to its original shape. 250 is actually quite a few, there it goes. So now it's coming back. So that's a really neat effect. And we can go to our other backdrop. And let's do that in code. Rather than go to our backdrop and actually click our other backdrop, we could just say next backdrop after this one repeats. And it'll do the same thing for the other backdrop. So let's see what happens here. So I'm going to run this one. It's going to repeat for 250 times. And then it's going to repeat back. Then it's going to go to its next backdrop. So the first repeat, that's what it's doing now. 
and it just keeps adding to that whirl. Then it's going to do another repeat with that whirl to bring it back. Now it's in the second repeat because you could see it shrinking. And then it's just going to switch backdrops and then repeat on the next backdrop. So this this program will basically go on and on forever. Okay, almost done. And now it should switch backdrops once everything's straight. And now it goes to the other backdrop. And you can see the whirl on this is pretty interesting. We don't have lines that bend. So it's just going to make a little spiral. And then, of course, it'll just spiral back as soon as this one's made. And, of course, if you want it to go faster, you could just increase the whirl effect number. Not by too much. You could, you could do 30 or 50, but always have the match have a positive and then a negative. This way they go back. Unless your effect is to just keep spiraling in one direction, and that's fine. If you wanted to just do something really quick where it spirals and unspirals fast, just use a smaller repeat. So you can do 25 and 25 instead of that, and you'll see this repeat much faster. And you can see that's a really short repeat. 25 repeats on that isn't much, but you can see it just changing the background. So you could make all kinds of crazy effects, and some of these would look really great with a music background. And to do that, let me show you that too, because that's something that I'm always asked. How do I make a music loop? So if you go to Sounds, and you go to Choose Sound from Library, and of course you could in import your own, but uh, Scratch has a great library of music loops. So I click on Music Loops, and you can do something like, let's see, let's dance. <laughs> Okay, that would be an interesting one. So we're going to try that. All right. So now this won't automatically play when we run our script because we didn't tell it to play any sound. So we're going to go back to scripts. I'm going to hit stop. And let's increase this again. Let's make it 150 and 150 for whirl. And then we're going to go to sound. And I like to put my sounds in a separate script block. So I'm going to add a second when flag is clicked and then a forever loop and then I'm going to add sounds and I'm going to do play sound until done just like that okay and you definitely want to do play sound until done for the main reason that if you if you don't you will just get clicking because the sound has to play there's no other code that will run in here so it'll loop immediately and the sound won't come out so you always want to do when you just have a music loop in a forever loop always have until done at the end this way you won't hear bad sound. I'm gonna actually play for you what it'll sound like if you don't put until done I'll hit play See, you'll get some really bad static because it never gets a chance to finish the first the first loop so I'm gonna put until done and watch the difference or actually hear the difference <laughs> sound will just keep looping endlessly with the effect so that's something to do and you could do that in your game too if you ever want to add a soundtrack to the back of your game this is just a simple way to do it not not much harder than that all right so and also you might want to try some of these other effects like you could try mosaic let's do mosaic same same numbers just for mosaic. <laughs> Nothing terribly exciting there. Uh, Fisheye might be interesting also to try, but be f uh, you know feel free to experiment. And So have fun, play with these backdrops, make your own. You could do any kind of scribbling on it too, just because I use the bucket fill. Uh, you could try doing it with different shapes and adding a shape on here, like you can add a circle uh, and then try to fill the circle with different things. 
and see if that does anything different. And then just run your script. Fish eye again, and I can do, I could try the world effect back again. So no matter what you put in there, it'll always have a really cool effect. So there you have it. This is Ken Adelblass, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.